Presentations. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, y'all. Praise the Lord. Uh, we are here again. Uh, is there anybody here that wasn't here last week? Okay. Did you guys get, uh, okay, I know you got a book in the outline. Did y'all get books in the outlines? Great. Praise the Lord. Uh, we do use them honest. It, if you got, haven't gotten one, please feel free to grab them. Uh, they are there to use. Okay, again this week we are going to be talking about and studying on how to build a powerful praying church, which means building a powerful praying us. Uh, that is the hope. Last week we went over, just a moment, so I get it right, <sighs> make abiding in life in Christ a lifestyle uh, which means just living with and in him. Uh, schedule regular, uninterrupted, unhurried time in prayer and seeking God's heart and mind. Um, and believe it or not, that was a 60-minute discussion that went a little past that. So uh, <coughs> we're going to be here a minute. Uh, as we go through this, just a note. It, I know some folks may have not made last week. Uh, it's all pos it's possible any of us could miss a week or something here and there through the six sessions. If you miss one, uh, I'm, you can contact me or I'm sure Mike if you want to kind of catch up and find out what we covered in that session and stuff, and we'll make sure you get brought up to date. So feel free to give us a holler. And if you can't catch us, just... Call the church office because Pat and Anna can always find us. Uh, <laughs> they're real good at that. Uh, okay. Any questions or comments before we start in from last week? Got some good response. Yeah, yeah it's online. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're streaming it right now. Or at least that's the hope. <laughs> Uh, cool. We got it going. Okay. Shall we open with a word of prayer? Father, we ask you to take this time to use us to help us be that God-honoring, world-changing church that you've called us to be. Holy Spirit, let our words be your words. Let our thoughts be your thoughts. Teach us, help us to grow, help us to, to be and have that special relationship with you and be everything you've called us to be because we know we can do that in you. So we thank you for all your blessings for everyone here tonight. We just praise and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, real quick, I want to note something. It, when we were working on this and, and decided to do it, I suggested and, and we decided to call it a study instead of a training or a seminar or a teaching. And there's a real reason for that. Uh, in those other things, somebody stands up here and talks and gives really brilliant explanations and everybody smiles a lot and goes home. Uh, we're studying and learning too. We're a part of this, not, you know, this guy up here. Uh, I got so blessed and learned a lot last time doing this and hope to continue to do that. And I think Mike did too. All of us did. So, uh, if you have, it, in fact, our pastor this week, Get, came up with something that I hadn't really thought about and last week Wes came up with something that had struck him that hadn't really hit me that way and it was really important and, and we all have a relationship with God we talked about that last week and like any kids with our father each one of us relationship is just a little bit different 
So if you catch something, <clears throat> if you see something that touches your heart and it hasn't struck us, please let us know. We're all part of this study, and it's so far been a real blessing, and I know several folks have mentioned they, they really enjoyed last week, so I'm praying it's going to continue and that we can all help it build into what we can really become. With that, I'll get on what I should, with what I should be doing. <clears throat> okay, we're going to do the next three steps in the outline. And that starts with pray to see God more clearly. Now, we simply wrote there, we need to know the God we pray to. Doesn't that kind of make sense? Uh, we pray to this being that's out there somewhere and does something. Managed to create all of us and just about everything else, apparently. Kind of seems important to know who he is and why we should be worshiping him. Uh, Psalm 18.24. I got, I got too much stuff here. Okay, Psalm 1824 says, Therefore hath God recompensed me according to my righteousness, according, is that right? Yeah, to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. It, I got the wrong verse on there. It is supposed to be a friend wiser and closer than a brother. Wrote down the wrong verse. Sorry about that. I will find that and correct it by next week. Uh, but God is. And if you stop and think about it, how many friends do you have that are with you all the time? And when you cry out to them in that deepest, darkest moment, are there for you. I got one. And his name is Jesus. Uh, John, First John one nine says, "If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us." A faithful God He is. Uh, despite the fact that He cannot stand sin, <laughs> which if you have not. You are the only person I know who hasn't. Uh, and God can't even look on sin. It just is totally against everything he is. And yet, he loves us enough to forgive us, and all we got to do is ask. That ain't a bad deal, folks. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a pretty small price for eternal life and to live with him forever. Uh, I'll take that deal any time. And now, uh, talking with Pastor Phil this afternoon for a few moments, he noted something uh, that was kind of special. And <clears throat> since he, he mentioned it, I kind of thought it would be nice if he was willing to share what he, he had gotten out of... Uh, there's a paragraph on page 18 in the book. It's the first full paragraph. And Pastor Phil, would you mind? Hey, thank you. Uh, they're doing a great job, and I really appreciate that. Uh, when I was speaking with Jack today, I was just sharing uh, from this page, page 18, this first paragraph. That's something that's really hit me. And I want you to think, do you know anybody in your life that is discouraged right now? You know anybody who's discouraged? Uh, we probably can all think of somebody, right? And for some, it might be closer to home than others. And I want to read a paragraph, and I want to unpack it a little bit with you. 
And of course, this was written to pastors, and I was telling our deacons last night, we had a meeting, I was saying one, one of the reasons why I really want our church to go through this book, even though it was written to pastors, the church, the members need to know what their pastor's reading, right? Sometimes a pastor will go to a conference and there'll be an amazing speaker, and when he gets back to the church, he can't convey everything that the Lord said during that, so why not just go through it together? So that we all hear from the Lord about the subject of creating a culture of prayer. That's what we're talking about. Not a paradigm, not a, a program, not a season of prayer. But we want to create a culture of prayer in this church. And so this is what hit me. So when ministers begin to worry, fear, or become discouraged, and you can put anybody in there, when you become discouraged or worry, uh, you are clearly, or we are clearly, Okay, whoever is in a state of worry or being discouraged, and it happens. We live in a discouraging time, if we were just honest, right? I mean, every headline is, uh, groceries are expensive, and that's the good news, right? I mean, it's like every, every day you're getting more of that. It's discouraging. If they were, they were, it says this, they are clearly not spending adequate time in God's presence. So I want you to think about that. When we're discouraged... We're not spending enough time in the presence of the Lord. And the question is, why would that be? Why would Richard Blackaby and Rick Fisher say that? That when you're discouraged, you're not spending time enough with the Lord. If you were spending enough time, you would be better able to understand the awesome nature of the God that you serve and that you represent. Over the years, and this is what he says, over the years we have ministered to many church leaders who were struggling. Not once have we met a discouraged pastor who was experiencing a vibrant prayer life. So what they're saying is that every time we've met with a discouraged pastor, and these people travel all over the place, and I'll get back to that in a moment, uh, they even come to places like Casa Grande, okay? That's kind of a hint of what I'm about to say. I want to give you some good news. So what they said, these guys travel everywhere. They said every time, 100%, of the discouraged pastors we've met did not have a vibrant prayer life. Not a single pastor, and you can extrapolate that to all of us, not a single one of us who is discouraged has a vibrant prayer life. And the question is, why would that be? See, that's the thing that jumped out was, okay, why? Why, for people who travel that much and meet so many discouraged people and, and also encourage people, is because the closer your walk with the Lord is, okay, the, the closer you have and I have a culture of prayer in our own life, the less likely we are to be discouraged by the temporary things of life. It just happens that way because we get to experience the awesome nature of our God. And so one of the things I like to tell people is that prayer, speaking or praying to the Lord, is only 10% talking, and it is 90% listening. And here's why. I am not infallible. You are not infallible. In other words, you are not without error. That means if I'm not infallible, that means that my prayers, what I would speak, are not infallible. The only infallible prayer I pray is the prayer that the Holy Spirit prays on my behalf. Remember, God's word says sometimes we don't even know what to pray for, but on our behalf, the Holy Spirit groans out for us. Those are the only infallible prayers that are uttered on our behalf, is, are the prayers uttered by the Holy Spirit for groanings that are too deep for words, that we don't even pray them. So I want to encourage you that as we go through this, and as you go through this, when you pray, it's, it's okay to speak. God knows what you're going to say, and we should speak to the Lord. Right? The, God's word is full of times that people spoke. But I'll give you just a concrete example, and then I'll tell you why, uh, why I'm excited about uh, the 24th of April. So this morning, for example, uh, just an example of my prayer this morning is I, I spoke to the Lord this morning before I got to bed. And after speaking, I listened. And this is what the Lord said. Call Bud Anderson. Now, you have to understand, I was not expecting to do these things. And this is the thing about prayer. When you listen to the Lord, he, he often, here's, here's the crazy thing. When I listen to the Lord, he doesn't say, you are so perfect and wonderful. 
He doesn't say that. You know what he usually says? Have you thought of this? And that's why listening is so important. It's because God doesn't sit around just affirming you like, man, you are, man, you should really take this job. He doesn't do that. And so when, you, this is the, the crazy thing, though. When you listen, you have, we, I have to be prepared for something different than I was expecting. So he told me three things this morning. And it wasn't an audible voice, but it was a sense that this is what you're going to do today. In the midst of all my agenda, right, because if you look at my calendar my phone, it has a bunch of things on it every day. Call Bud Anderson, call your sister, and text Bill O'Neill. Those are the three things that I knew that the Lord wanted me to do today. I didn't wake up thinking, I'm going to call Bud Anderson today. But I called him. You know what? I talked to him. Called my sister. I hadn't talked to her in uh, forever. Talked to her. Sent the text to Bill O'Neill. Prayed for them and texted them. And so when you, you cry out to God, and then just stop speaking. And listen to what that sense is on your heart. And usually, just like today, amazing things happened in those conversations. 24th of April, Rick Fisher is going to be here at Trinity, one of the authors. And so I'm, he's going to be in the 11 o'clock service. I've invited them to stay for lunch and to speak on the topic of prayer, how to develop a culture of prayer. Okay? And I'm excited about that. But going back to that page 18 is when I'm discouraged I shouldn't run away from the Lord. I shouldn't speak more to the Lord, although that's okay. I need to listen more. And how can I be discouraged when I like, I know he's told me to call Bud Anderson. And so I'm going to call Bud Anderson. And no matter what's going on in my life, you know, I just heard from the Lord. Not a big thing. Not going to make any records. But if it can take a servant to the Lord through one more day serving him, that brings joy. Amen? Brother, here you go. Hey, Pastor Bill, mm -hmm. once you, before you leave, let's just turn one page back to page 17. Okay. Because it, it reinforces to me that the first full paragraph says there's no one in this is, I just put it right on the same page again. Go ahead, read it. So no one in heaven is discouraged. Amen. No pessimists are gathered before God's celestial throne. I'm so glad. So anytime you're around someone who's pessimistic, you can authentically say, you do know that that pessimism passes away. It's not eternal, so why do it? It's not eternal. Love is eternal, right? Grace is eternal. All right, it is impossible to truly know God and to lose hope or become discouraged. A.W. Tozer declared, the man who comes to a right belief about God is relieved of 10,000 temporal problems. So necessary to the church is a lofty concept of God that when that concept in any measure declines, the church with her worship and her moral standards declines along with it. The first step down for any church is taken when it surrenders its high opinion of God. And that is why we always talk about, and even from the pulpit, the holiness of God. We never lose sight of the holiness of God because every attribute of God comes out of his holiness. His love is holy. His goodness is holy. His long-suffering is holy. Are you all glad he has a holy long-suffering? I know I am. Everything about God, his mercy is holy. And what he's saying is the moment we take that down, that view of God down, every other standard that we have drops. Our moral standards, our kindness, everything. We must have a high view of the Lord. Go ahead, brother. That's right. Amen. Amen. God's holiness, his word, his eternal truth, his truth flows from his holiness. And we uphold his holiness when we uphold the word of God as eternal truth. That's right, brother. Good word. Thank you, Wes, for pointing that out. Thank you. That's exciting. It's getting better all the time, folks. We, uh, <clears throat> I am going to put a slight caveat on that, though. You, you happen to be praying and you get an idea or something and you want to come share it with pastor, be careful of that office over there. I've uh, done that a couple of times now, like 
this idea. And I walked out realizing I volunteered to do this. Uh, <laughs> not making any suggestions, mind you. But you might want to be a little careful when you're praying. <clears throat> Moving on quickly. Uh, thank you, Pastor. That's great. And thank you, Wes. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, the, uh, that first verse that I destroyed is actually Proverbs, not Psalms. Might work better. Thank you, dear. Uh, okay. Wow, that was cool. <sighs> Revelations 1. N yes, ma'am. Uh, 1824. I'm sorry. We okay? Uh, I'm not going to read that, but in Revelations 1, 9 to 17, it refers to God, mighty, awesome, wondrous, the Alpha and the Omega, being, beginning and end. He is, he was, and he will be. And you know what? We're going to be too. That's a promise, folks. And God don't lie. Uh, yeah, what Pastor said, and it, it is amazing that we can have a friend that is closer than a brother, Amen. that is our constant companion, and he has gotten me through more things than I can begin to comprehend. And yet is the creator of everything, is the single most awesome, amazing, totally wondrous power that exists. That's my best friend, and that's also my dad. That's my God. Beat that. <laughs> uh, he's God. And that's beyond my comprehension, let alone ability to explain those words don't even begin to, but they give us an idea of just how really, truly amazing our God is. <laughs> Exodus 3.14 and John 18.5 and 6. Exodus is where Moses asked God, uh, what do I tell him, who do I tell him sent me? God said, I am. End of discussion. Stop and think about that. Two of the smallest words in the English language. And of course, it wasn't originally written in the English language, but they're still two very small words. Sum up the most powerful, amazing being that ever was or will be. Ah, uh, that's God. With those two words, all of existence is encompassed. That's pretty heavy duty. Find that in the dictionary. Uh, this is a God we can have a real relationship with. It, that's, I don't know, that's just amazing to me. That, it's hard for me to even comprehend that God would put up with me that much. Uh, Jesus. I believe Jesus uh, didn't, doesn't it quote that he did not think it wrong to be equal and claim equality with God. He what is one third of the Godhead. And remember what happened in the garden? Jesus said those two words. And they asked him, going to haul him off to jail. It, this is a legion of Roman soldiers. These were the baddest dudes in the valley. <laughs> you did not mess with these people. And Jesus said, I am. And they all fell down. Kapow. Did you ever stop and think? Jesus said he could have called 10, 000, down 10,000 angels. Now, okay, yeah, he could have. So, folks... Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? God sent two. What happened? I don't want to see 10,000. <laughs> uh, wow. That's the power of our God. And it, 
It ain't no big thing, folks. God is God. His power is beyond me, but so is his love. Only I got it. It is amazing. One more verse, and I do want to read that one. John 20, 17. And yeah, I got that one right. <clears throat> Mary meets Jesus on the road, uh, and he hasn't gone to the disciples yet. And he said to her, Mary, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. That's our God, too. That's our Father. Next week, we're going to start talking about the priestly prayer of Jesus. And in that, we're going to talk quite a bit about God's family. And see, God is, Jesus is, the Holy Spirit is, the disciples became, and guess who that gets handed down to, folks? We got a heck of a legacy to fulfill. And it starts right here with prayer. <sighs> it, you know, it, I've been a Christian for a while. Long time. Is, we count time. And still, my heart gets all wound up talking and thinking about these things and, and thinking about what God's doing. I pray I never lose that, that joy and that, that sight that the best is still yet to come. Uh, that probably covers more than I needed to on the first part. So I am now going to turn it over to Mike to do uh, number five, Pray for Surrender. And he's got some good stuff, folks. You know, it's a privilege to be here tonight. And it's not that I have good stuff. It's that the Lord has good stuff. Amen. You know, when we say surrender, what do you think of? But the kind of surrender that we're talking about, I want to share with in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. And he, meaning Jesus, went a little beyond. little beyond them, meaning the disciples, and he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And my question to you is, are you willing to sacrifice yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ, to God Almighty, even to the point of death? That's what we need to pray every day. And as we go on, we need to pray, Heavenly Father, in all things, it's not my will, but your will. Because as the word says, thy will be done.
it is, it's not easy for us. It's a struggle for us. But we have to have the faith that God is in control of our life. And just as the pastor said earlier when we was talking about praying and listening. We need to pray and listen to God. We need to pray and listen to what he has in store for us. We need to pray for the needs of others and all these things. And expect that he hears our prayer. In Psalm 48 it says, I delight that they, that thy will, O oh my God, yes, the law is within my heart. The law of the Ten Commandments needs to be in our heart. Does it mean that we're going to keep every one of them but that's what keeps us in check that is what keeps us to know that God is in control and we need to surrender to his leading and his guidance in our life and in Luke 17 10 it says we are unprofitable servants What does it mean, unprofitable servants? We're not to do what we think God should do for us. We need to let God show us what he will do in our lives. That is surrender. We need to seek him every moment of our life. Seek his will every moment of our life. And we need to do what God asked us to do. And he will show us the way. James says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. If we want to put the devil in check, we need to pray every moment of, every, of our life. As Paul says, pray without ceasing. And submit ourselves to God's leading. And submit ourselves to his teaching. And submit ourselves to listening. It is so hard and difficult times to say, God, let it be in your hands. We want to just say, no, let, let, me, let me show you what, which way I need to go. Or let me show you what we, you need to do, God. That's not what we need to do. We need to say, Lord, just as Christ said, his heavenly Father, to the point, Lord, not my will, but your will. Are you to that point in your life to stole or surrender? I think of the hymn, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I give it all. Have you reached that point really in your life when you sing those words or when you hear those words? Do you really surrender it all? Are you willing to say, no matter what, no matter what happens, if I die tomorrow, it's okay. If I live on, it's okay. Because I got the opportunity to tell others what it means to be committed to Jesus Christ. 
what it means to live a life of knowing that God is in control. And we will struggle, but we need to pray for one another, uplift one another, encourage one another, pray for one another. And as a church, we need to surrender to the leading of God in our life, in this community. We need to pray for our pastors, our pastor, the leaders of our church. We need to pray for Trinity as a whole. God, use us. Help us to surrender to your leading, what you desire for us to do in this community, what you desire for us to do to reach others who need to hear the story about the Jesus Christ. Are we willing to surrender? Are we willing to give our lives totally? You know, I, I, like, uh, I think of the song, I Can Only Imagine. You know, I can only imagine what I'll do when I see Jesus face to face. And it makes me think of that verse where Christ, when he fell on his face, he submitted to what his heavenly father wanted him to do. I pray that when a time comes, I don't know what I will do when I see him face to face. I know that I will. Whether I dance or whether I fall on my face, and give him the honor and the glory and the praise for all that he does in our life. My question to you, what is total surrender to you? Have you really surrendered your life to Jesus Christ wholly and totally? And if not, Pray, seek pastor, seek others to help you, to guide you. But most of all, seek Jesus Christ. Seek God and say, Lord, show me. Show me what you need me to do to totally surrender my life to you. You know, it's... It just astounds me to think about, even in my own life, there has been times when my wife has gone through several things, and I just really said, Lord, it's in your hands. Whatever happens, it will. but it's in your hands and I give it to you. Do you do that? Are you willing? If any of us need to surrender, just go to your quiet place and say, Lord, I truly want to surrender myself to you. Any questions, comments? Except through Jesus Christ. 
That's right, Darren. That's right. He is the truth, the way, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. Let me grab my book real quick. Yes. Okay. We offer to. Uh, we often pr uh, prefer somebody scratch <laughs> cross through it. <laughs> My wife highlighted it. We often prefer commitment to acts of of surrender and commitment to something we do. Surrender is something God does, and commitment indicates we are in control. Surrender and knowledge, we are powerless to achieve victory over circumstances. We cannot experience success in our own strength and wisdom. We must surrender every area of our life to Christ as he can do and through us in what alone can he can accomplish. That's a great point. And it is true. We need to surrender all because it's not what we can do. It's what God can do through us. And we can surrender. Everything, every moment, every issue, every little thing in our life, we need to surrender to the, our Lord Jesus Christ. It's all yours, sir. Thank you, sir. Ah. <clears throat> okay. I don't know how y'all are managing to sit through these quiet, boring discussions. I don't <laughs> understand it. Aha! Wow. Hey, do you know how exciting that is? Uh, the fact that folks are listening enough to write is praise to God just by itself. It, uh, I want to take just a second and thank you guys for being here. It, it's really precious. It struck me uh, and Mike and Sue and, and Nadal and Pastor, that this was kind of something special and something we needed to dig into. Uh, but I'd done a lot of training and stuff when I worked for the state, a lot of seminars and stuff. And <clears throat> you stand up in front of a group of people, and even a lot more than this, and <clears throat> you hope and pray that somebody listens, and, and you, afterwards you're waiting for somebody to say something just so you know they heard something. Uh, <laughs> To see folks writing and, and paying attention to this and giving input and sharing, that's a blessing I can't explain to you. Uh, it just makes my heart real good, and I thank you for that. Moving into our last section. Yep. We prayed for surrender. We, we prayed to see God more clearly, and we need to intercede for others. Now, that's a piece of cake, right? Most of us do that, I bet you. Uh, we intercede for family, we intercede for our church, we intercede for our pastor. Sometimes we intercede for ourselves. Uh, and that's okay. In fact, that's good. We're supposed to. Yeah, if you look up the, the definition, which I did, for intercede, it's intervene for one another with God. That's pretty clear. Uh... 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2, I hope. I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, 
for kings and for all those in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life to all godliness and honesty. That sounds pretty cool, right? Okay, take just a second, if you would, and think about Adam and Eve in the garden, Genesis. They had it. They had peace. They had contentment. All the food they needed. They had companionship with God. They had that. Sold it out for a lousy apple. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, that was tacky. But we have, it, wars have been fought. Stupid, stupid, horrible things happen. And when it comes right down to it, we're still just trying to get back to that peace and that holiness and godliness. In our hearts, deep down, we have a need for that. And it gets lost in the insanity and the, the stupidity of the world. But it's still there in us. And we need to pray for that. We need to pray for our whole world, which needs it so bad right now. For people in authority, both governmentally, uh, worshipfully. We need to lift our pastors up, folks. There are so many pastors struggling right now. In fact, I forget where I was going the other day, but I drove by two churches that two years ago were flourishing. There was lots of people in and stuff. Their doors are closed and locked. Now, I am going to point something out because we talked last week about uh, needing to share and, and talk about when we see God answers prayer, right? So folks ain't going to know that it works if we don't let them know. Well, I got, and some of y'all were here. A number of years ago now, we had a search committee. And they, for over a year, searched and they prayed and they come back to us every so often and they, were, they, they would tell us how hard they were praying and they were looking for the pastor for our church. That went on for over a year. But they kept praying and they kept looking. And then one day they came in and they said, hey, you know, we got this guy named Dr. Phil Pastor. Uh, that fellow right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, him. I'm sorry, Pastor. <clears throat> and he came to our church. Okay. He's like a pretty good guy. He had a beautiful family. You know, all right, this might work out all right. Now, since then, folks, we have signed our country go totally nuts. <sighs> Trying to call right, wrong, wrong, right. It, it, turn everything upside down. A pandemic that shut down everything in the country and most of the world. And yet, our churches continue to have people get saved. Amen. People join our church. Our church continues to thrive. Now, you tell me God don't answer prayers. Amen. Thank you. We are blessed. We have so many people in our church that work hard, that are ministering in all kinds of different ways and blessing people and helping people. And we need to rejoice in that. That's God working in our church, folks. And there's, we, we've gone through all of that, and that's happening when other churches are having to close their doors and lock them up. We need to be pretty great. Or I need to be pretty grateful. I think we all do. Uh, God answers prayers. Colossians 1, 9, 10. There it is. Colossians 1. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That's a prayer I can handle. Uh, 
that's Paul praying for those folks. And what a wonderful prayer. Uh, might not be a bad one to plagiarize a little bit. We need to be praying for the lost, for each other, for our town and our country and this whole crazy world. <laughs> That's a lot to pray for. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes we need to take it a little bit of time. Sometimes we need to pray together. Sometimes, you know, to this day, and I do my time in praying and stuff, spend my time with God. But to this day, the most, the time when I am just totally connected to God, when I know He is there, is one of those times when I reach that point where just nothing else, and I can only get two words out, and they're, Lord, help. And stuff happens. Sometimes that just knowing that God's there and no matter what, he's going to be there. I have had folks suggest that my time on this planet could be shortened and it wouldn't hurt a whole lot. And they might be right. But <clears throat> my response was, cool. <laughs> I stay here. I'm doing what I'm supposed to. I go home. I'm out of here. Y'all deal with it. Uh, I'm good either way. And God has given us that. Uh, they can take everything. They can say bad things about us, and it happens. But they can't do that. God just is going to laugh. He is not impressed. Uh, we are still got a few minutes. Real quick, yeah, to begin with, yet yeah, the next session... Coming up next week, I hope and pray most or everybody can be here again. I am so grateful you all are here again tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about what they call Jesus' priestly prayer. And that's a prayer, <laughs> which is going to take us a few minutes to go through. But if you break it down and look at it, what he prayed is so amazing. And I would like everybody... This week, if you can make it back next week, to read that again if you haven't already read it or read it. But think of it in the terms of we are brothers and sisters to Jesus. We are a part of God's family. Not second cousins down the road. We're brothers and sisters, folks. Joint heirs. We have a legacy to uphold and to share and to pass on. And his name is Jesus. And that will only happen if we're praying and talking to him, trying to walk with him, following the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I really, yeah, the fact that one of the authors of this book is going to come and share with us just really excites me. I, uh, you don't, in the real, regular world, uh, authors are very possessive of their works. And the fact that they would even allow us to do the outline and, and support it just excited me to no end. But now that they're, one of them is going to come and share with, that's even better. Uh, this is the stuff we need. This is the stuff that, that only God can do. Uh, anybody got any, we still got about five minutes. Are we okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can close it up. Thank you. God bless you. Hope to see you next week. Thank you. Let, let's give uh, them a, a round of applause. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Mike. And also Sue and Nathan. On page 30, if you turn to page 30 in the book, he said, the author says something that kind of jumps out at you and it can seem harsh. They were praying about something as a church, and the pastor got up.
from the pulpit and said, look, we're going to pray for about the next month or so. And I'm asking you to pray every day. And then we're going to have a meeting. But when we come to that meeting, if you have not prayed every day, you will not speak. You're welcome to go, but don't speak. He, and people, of course, well, why is that? Because what he says is, we don't really, we're not interested in what you think. We want to know what God wills. Amen. And if you're not serious enough about listening to God for the next 30 days every day, then what we're going to get is your opinion. And we don't need your opinion. That seems harsh, but I want to show you concretely why. Does anybody have a phone? Real quick, in the next few minutes. Anybody have a phone with a, with a time, a watch? I mean, a stopwatch? If you turn to Matthew 26, verses 39, 42, and 44, those are the three prayers of Jesus at Gethsemane. It took 14 seconds for him to pray. I guarantee you his time in prayer was more than 14 seconds. That was what he spoke. We know circumstantially that it had to have been longer the time that he spent in prayer because each time the disciples were falling asleep. And you can't fall asleep. Well, three, verse, three times of prayer divided by 14 seconds is less than five seconds. Per, they didn't fall asleep in five seconds. I know people can fall asleep quickly, not that quickly, right? The total count of the prayer that led to eternity, 14 seconds for eternity. The total amount that Jesus spoke was 14 seconds. We know that the Father must have spoken a whole lot longer Amen. to affirm that you are going to the cross with the weight of sin on your shoulders. And that prayer in Gethsemane, those three prayers that lasted a total of 14 seconds, friend, I'm telling you, it was far less about what Jesus thought and far more about what the Father willed. And that's why he ends with, but not my will, your will be done. And so we see there 14 seconds of speaking for eternity, our eternity. We know the Father must have spoken longer. What a great model for us when we pray. Speak what's on your heart, but listen to the Father. Not what I think, but what the Father wills. And isn't that, have you ever been, in a place where they preach basically from the New York Times, is their opinion on something? I've been in places like that. I hope that my preaching isn't what I think. I hope it's what the Father wills. Because it comes from His Word, which is what you're saying. It comes from His Word. Okay, 14 seconds, the total sum of all of Christ's prayer in Gethsemane. We know the Father must have spoken a lot longer. That's the important thing. Darren, you had your hand up before. Okay. So, Mike, would you close us in prayer, brother? Yeah, we, can we talk to you afterwards about that, okay, Darren? It was part of the overlay. Yeah, because we need to close, okay? okay Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. And Lord, it is truly very important for us to surrender ourselves to you. And when we surrender our prayers to you, Lord, as Pastor said, we need to take that extra time to listen to what you have to tell us, to show us how to live our lives for you so that we may glorify you, not us glorify ourselves. Father, we ask you to bless each and every person who's here tonight. And Lord, for those who are not here, Father, we pray, Lord, that you will, whatever the reason is, bring them back next week. And we ask all these things 
In the name of Jesus, amen. And you all come back.